Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show y'all how I made my new pendant displays. Now I use these for displaying pendants without chains. Be sure to subscribe and ring my bell um, to stay notified for whenever I come out with more display tutorials coming soon. Um, and all the links for everything are down below so let's get started. <laughs> Hey y'all, to make this display, I've started by cutting out a piece of five or six millimeter foam, just whatever you have on hand, <clears throat> and I cut it to be a size where it will fit in the outer edge of these grid squares. There will be links to all the tools materials down in the video description below to where you can purchase your own grid squares, and honestly, I highly recommend them. Um, for the, they've completely changed the way uh, we do our booth setup and we've been using them for maybe eight years now and the, I'm finding new ways all the time of being able to utilize them they are from the outer diameter or outer perimeter or from the, this side to this side they're 14 inches so you'll do about you know 13 and a half inches sits you know square sits pretty comfortably in there and then I've cut out a piece of oil tanned leather and I'm using oh what thickness is this it's about three millimeters thick whatever ounceage you know that equates to um, and this is an oil tanned leather though I do have another type of leather on hand that was like a chrome tanned and I liked the look of it but just whatever kind of leather I'm just shooting for consistency between all of my displays and I have cut that too pretty precisely, as precise as I could get it, 14 inches square. And I have planned out where I want my hooks to be to attach my pendants. And so I have them marked. This is the top over here. And I just used this all. Oh, where'd it go? I just used this all to kind of poke I templated it out on the piece of foam. If you can see, there's some little pinholes just you near know, where I kind of poked and was like, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I transferred it through onto the leather. And now I've gone through with a wing divider, very handy tool. I have this at just a hair under a quarter of an inch and marked off the border. And now I'm gonna be going through with a four prong chisel and each of these are maybe an eighth of an inch wide. Though, again, it's most important that it matches up. So I guess it's 3 30 seconds because that's the width of lacing that I like to use with it. And so I'm going to just pick a corner and start there. I like to be a little bit offset. Like I'm not lined up directly. Let me get a different camera angle for you. So I'm not lining up specifically like right on the corner. I'm coming in just a bit. It's gonna be loud. Coming through, making sure I have clean cuts all the way through because then I'll be coming around and lining up. You know, I just, I don't wanna just cut out that corner though cause then I'll have a little flappy bit. And then to do the next punch. I'm going to place our chisel on the duplicating that first hole, then lining it up with the line that we've done. Giving it some wax. Quack, quack, quack. And I'm going to do this all the way around. Now that we have all of our holes punched, I'm going to go through with this 3 30 seconds of an inch calf lace. So this is the superior calf lace from Tandy Leather. And I really like this stuff because it feels like kind of half round. And I think it has a really nice like finished look to it. And I'm going to be using this lacing needle. And you can see it actually has a little tooth in there. 
that holds on to the leather lacing. Just using a craft knife, just whichever one you have on hand, pinning it to my surface and then pulling. Uh, you could do a longer, like have it be thinned out longer. I like it like this. That's just me though. And then I'm going to open that up with my finger. Put our leather down inside. I found if I like I kind of skive it too thin, uh, then it, I don't have enough material to hold on to. I do want to get that nice and lined up in there though. I don't want any little bits poking out because they will get snagged. And then I'm going to come through with my nylon gel pliers and just give it a smush. Now my leather always wants to kind of go off to one side or the other, so don't hesitate to reposition it. <clears throat> but you want it you want it to be in there. And then also like in there like when you tug on it, it's not coming out. Uh there is a kind of finished and unfinished side of this, so that's something to be mindful of whenever we go through and do our lacing. So we have our grid square. We're going to take our piece of foam and I want to this is we're going to start at the top because I'm going to be attaching this clasp. This is optional. I am going to be using this to attach the display so that it hangs a bit to the um, the kind of the rest of our display. We'll go into more into that later. But it has this really cool little swivel bit. Um, and so I'm just going to be lacing right through here and I want that centered up right there. So let's determine the top of our display. There we are. Oh, and I almost forgot. Uh, you can go through with scissors if you like, but I'm very inconsistent, so I like to use this little corner tool. And I just like to get in there and place it and... Just remove some of that excess material. This is a very... Um, I feel like non-essential tool, but I love it. It makes my life a lot easier. It helps me to make all of my corners just that much more consistent. Um, and I do quite a bit of leather working, so uh, I didn't mind the investment in getting this tool. But you could just as easily make yourself a template and draw out the, uh, the curvature that you want. And then, oh, oh boy, I lost which way was up. That's the bottom. There we go. Um, you can just draw it out and then cut it with some scissors or a box knife or something. So we put our grid here and we start always, always, always double check your measurement. Just make sure that all the ends are going. Yeah, that seems like it's going to work out pretty well. And I'm going to start kind of in this square. That way I can go ahead and get that latch attached. Um, very very early on just because uh, I've done I've made some of these where I've completely forgotten <laughs> to uh, to add it so I'm just gonna come in right here through the back side of our leather I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit that way hopefully y'all will be able to see a little better <clears throat> and so I'm just gonna pull through and I'm lacing with the rough side up right now I'm pulling through I usually use about an arm span of uh, I'm on five foot four so about five feet of um, lacing and then I leave just a little bit of a tail there and I'm gonna be tucking that behind but every stitch that I do I start at the base and just pull and this removes any little twists and turns and knots that might be happening in my lace and so then I whoop, bring it around everything around our metal and we're just sandwiching the foam in between but just pushing through keeping all of my lacing off to the side making sure that our tail is above the uh, needle that way it's going to be encased and then we just pull on through slow and steady wins the race on this one there's no sense in rushing and getting knotted up and getting twists so again I just drop my needle entirely 
grab by the base and then pull. And we're just going to be doing a, a simple whip stitch. No fancy knotting or anything on the sides. You can. Uh, I have chosen not to because then I don't think like this whole thing, this whole flat that we're doing won't fit into its cubby the way that I want it to. But you know your display better than anybody. Um, so you do you. Also, I have five of these to make total, and I didn't feel like doing that much decorative uh, <laughs> stitching around the edges. I was like, yeah, we're just whip stitching it. Do, 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 do. I'm just coming around, and it is just a whole bunch of this, y'all. Though, again, okay, yeah, I'm not there yet. It's this one <laughs> that I'm going to be attaching the, uh, the latch. <clears throat> so just pulling it on through. And once you get the muscle memory down, this is a perfect thing to do while, uh, you know, binging a show or I like watching nature shows and watching like little garden updates and stuff and watch other YouTubers and it's something fun to keep my hands busy. And sometimes my hands will get a little crampy. So when I come around, I'll still place it. But then I'll use these nylon gel pliers that are all jinked up from doing years of wire wrapping and I'll grip my needle and just pull straight towards me. And then I'll put my pliers down and then I'll just pull it on through. And when it, this saves my hands in the long run uh, and it's like it takes a little bit longer, you know, picking up just the time even of just picking up and putting down the pliers. But it makes my hands feel like they can last a lot longer. Now we're coming up on this vertical bar here. So I'm just gonna be mindful of that. Go through. Though my hands are feeling pretty good today, so I'm not gonna bother with the pliers too much. I did just want to show you guys that option. And I prefer doing that to pliers like these, because ones like these can be really, you know, harsh on your needle. And um, I've actually broken a few needles that way. And I get these needles in like a pack of like, sometimes they sell them in like a pack of 10. I like to get them in a pack of 100 because I teach classes and it's just handy because I lose them more than I break them, honestly. <clears throat> so we're, we've gotten to, I'm going to show you the back real quick. So this is what our backside's looking like. Nice and tidy, I think. And you can see our little tail is encased between the metal and the leather fronting. Turning that back around <clears throat> excuse me so now position this I think I'm gonna do a stitch and then start attaching it because I do want it to be as centered as possible do, 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 do. and I'm going nice and slow because this if you're following along with me this might be your first time uh, doing leather working so or any stitching like this so you know step by step by step but also if you're very familiar with these techniques already and you just want to get the gist of it feel free to skip ahead or also just throw it into YouTube has this like super duper fast forward time speed or like two times speed actually it's not that fast <laughs> but uh, yeah just pop it on faster we'll get where we're going I'm just gonna treat the clasp like it's not even there I'm just starting through it putting it in my hand pushing through that hole and pulling our lacing through. <clears throat> I get questions quite a bit from folks uh, about if they have to use leather to do the projects that I'm doing where I'm doing them with leather. More often than not, if it's something where there's like tooling and things, uh, I do use yeah, the leather specifically because it's the only medium that I've found that will take those effects. You could very easily use different materials for this, though I do prefer leather because all of my scraps, I compost, they decompose in my garden. Uh, there's nothing, uh, you know, that's displacing in a landfill anywhere. Um, it's very, very durable. I've worked a lot with pleathers in the past because, you know, sometimes it can even seem more affordable, but even just after like six months of just using on the weekends for some of my displays, like the pleather would get like, just start peeling or maybe it was, I don't know if it was the humidity or being stored out in our van or what, but we have leather displays that we've made that I have 
greatly abused. Uh, many an outdoor craft show, many a, you know, it fl it rained and the ceiling leaked in our storage room and, you know, we had to lay everything out to let it dry, but the leather stuff has really held up. Um, so I do recommend leather for it, but, you know, uh, use your own, use your creative discretion and do whatever you want. Do, 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 do. Though I would not recommend just doing bare foam because something with the bare foam so if somebody if it gets pressed against something um, in your pack down whereas with the leather that same pressure well it was off camera that same pressure barely left an indent whereas it left a big big indent in our foam so again very durable um, so we've attached our little swivelly clasp and now I'm just going to continue all the way around again and I'm going to show you from the back side what's happening in case that's helpful to you. So looks like for now I can't see the front. Uh, I try to cross this vertical bar at the very last, last opportunity because uh, it just makes the stitching look more even. even. So I'm just pulling through. There we are. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> At this point, you, I guess you don't have to have the, the foam sandwiched in there. I prefer to, because <clears throat> sometimes, again, I've forgotten to add the foam. <laughs> uh, I just get caught up in lacing, but also it kind of forces me to, you know, do the shaping of the leather and everything, and especially up in, once we get into the corner here, um, it really... I feel like helps to have the foam there and helps me kind of pull everything on the leather nice and tight. So I'm going to keep doing our whip stitch and then I'll meet you guys back here for the next step. We have reached our first corner and we have a couple of options here. Um, we could just do a single stitch into each slot. Um, as we go around, or we could double up. I think doubling up gives a very nice look and feel. It keeps the stitches looking even all the way across. So I'm just going to rotate this. And we could use an awl to open our chisel mark up just a little bit more. Anything to make it just a tad easier on ourselves. And so now we're going to come through again through that same spot. Kind of forcing it through a bit. Pulling it on through. So there's that stitch. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we're going to continue around on the other side. And I'm going to keep stitching. And you could do double stitches like that all the way around, but I don't know. Oh, sorry, it's out of focus. I don't know how necessary that is. Again, use your own discretion. There isn't really like a right or wrong way of doing this. This is just how I'm kind of stumbling through it. Uh, so, um, you know, take what you will, cherry pick what's going to be useful to you, and then, you know, uh, find hopefully better ways of going about doing this. And then let me know down in the comments what you did differently. But we're just going to keep stitching around again. feels a little awkward because I'm trying to stay in frame, work around the camera, but that's all right. And then I'm going to keep stitching until we get to where we have about this much, you know, two or three inches of lacing left. Now off of the experience that I had making the previous model of this, um, I know that it takes about four uh, to five you know, arm spans, so 20 to 25 feet of lacing to go all the way around the edge, but, um, 
you know, your project might be different. Um, I do ha go ahead though and have a couple of our little other needles already set up and ready to go. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to get ourselves to those very last couple of stitches. And had I thought ahead more than what I did, um, I could have put the tail of this lace uh, and started encasing it like back here. But if you're like me and you consistently forget to do that, what we can do is we just go on through, open our needle up, put it over there so I don't lose it. And I'm afraid on this one that I might end up having a little bit of warping. We'll see though. Because the idea is if I could get it pulled nice and tight, but we'll see. And we'll address that if we start having problems with it. <clears throat> but we're going to come through now with our newly laced needle and come through the next lace. And this is, I, I don't think this is in any way proper, but again, it holds together and it looks the way that I want it to, so I think that means it works. I'm having a hard time getting this one through. What's up? Let's troubleshoot instead of forcing it. Oh, that's what happened. It went all kinds of wonky and weird on me. So let's see. How can we keep that from happening again? Grab our craft knife. Could use to sharpen that. Okay. Oh, and this needle doesn't even have a little pokey thingy, like a little spine to hold. So that's a problem. Okay, pinning that down nice and snug, wrapping around. Ah, that's much nicer. Okay, and we're going to just keep pulling this through. Excuse me until we have about that much tail we're gonna pull this one nice and tight and tuck them both uh, kind of by the metal on the back side grab our lace and make sure there are no twists in it and then wrap around so I'm hooking around both of our tails coming through and then pull it. Now before I tighten this down, I do want to get that stitch situated so that it looks like... Yep. Yeah, see, I wish I hadn't pulled as much as I had. It kind of roughed up that hole, but oh well. And now I'm just going to encase all of that uh, leather as we continue our lacing all the way around. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll meet you guys back here once we're finishing off the piece. So we're coming around on our last bit of stitching and I did want to just talk to y'all a little bit about um, some di different ideas that I was having while I was going through and doing this whip stitch and um, if you use foam, like if you don't want to use leather, some other different ideas is you could, and I would use a spray adhesive that doesn't dissolve the foam, like a, oh, is it like Super 77 or something? I don't know. There's some other ones on the market. I'll link them down below. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I have a bottle of it somewhere. Um, you can spray that on there and then carefully lay out your fabric. You could use... Um, like velvet or you could use burlap or you know like linen or something just whatever kind of aesthetic you want your booth to have um or your jewelry display if you're in a gallery or um even just for taking pictures uh, because i will be doing a whole line of booth display props um like necklace and bracelet and jewelry your 
<laughs> uh, all sorts of different kinds of jewelry. Um, I'll be doing videos showing how I make my displays. And so whatever motif you pick, you can repeat. And I've found that for myself, that I like my own booth. Um, I really like that sense of continuity. Um, it's It starts to have a feel and effect of like branding. Um, and this would be something that you could, you know, apply the fabric, have a little bit of a seam allowance, fold it over, and use, uh, shoot, you could use hot glue um, on the back side, just depending, you know, um, on what you feel like doing. Or you could use, like, a temporary, uh, oh, we got a twist. You could use a temporary tape, maybe? Um, some sort of adhesive to hands in the way um hold that down on the back so that everything's nice and smooth and then you could go through and do like a decorative embroidery stitch around the edging so I, I did get a twist you know I'm supposed to be belly up and I'm back up instead so I'm just gonna turn it over and hold it firm with my finger and just pull through so now it's the correct side up again if that makes sense and then we'll pull that back on through. Sometimes when I get really bad twists, I'll just remove my needle um, from the lacing and then just pull the whole stitch out, re-needle up, and then keep on going. But um, but yeah, so uh, giving yourself a little bit of a seam allowance on the back, doing a whip stitch around the edge that way. Um, there's a lot of lot of different routes that you could take. I personally, as a leather worker, have some leather on hand. It goes well with the aesthetic and branding of my booth and company. And uh, I enjoy the durability of it. But to each their own. So we're coming back around. And I'm really liking, like, I want it drum head tight. And I'm really pleased with how this came out. I could have gone maybe an eighth of an inch smaller overall with the uh, leather overlap. Like, I cut this, I cut it just a little bit too big, I guess is what I'm saying. I could have gone a little smaller and I'd have had an easier time of it, but I didn't want to risk going too small and having gaps. So, experiment, find your balance. And I'm just cut on around. I realize I'm off camera, but oops. <laughs> and not gonna lie, this is the second one of these that I've made today. And my hand is like wrecked, like so tired. <laughs> like my hands hurt. But I am compelled. I must keep going. Um, I'm a slave to my crafting sometimes it feels like. <clears throat> also, I cut my foam just a little large, and it's been getting in the way, like, this whole time, and it drives me crazy. But, somehow being lazy and not, you know, recutting it just made more work for myself. So, if, if I could have advice for future Vaughn, it's go ahead and retrim it, you know, recut the thing. You'll have an easier time of existing if you do. I really hope I have enough. Oh, I'm going to be so frustrated if I have to cut a whole nother cord just for, you know, an inch or two of stitching. Though I do have a little bin of all of my scrap uh, tail, you know, my scrap pieces of lacing specifically for when that does happen. Because it does happen. Way more than I'd want it to. You'd think I would have learned by now. But no. So, bear with me in suspense as we find out. I'm hopeful, but the more hopeful I get, the more I'm like, ah, nope, yeah, we're not going to have enough space. Enough lacing. We shall see. Yeah, it just makes the angle quite awkward as well. Trying to do this and stay in frame. Oof, no, that's not going to be enough. <sighs> okay. So what we're going to do... Oh, there's a scrap piece. I'm going to grab that. 
Now I have seen folks who will like, you know, skive both ends quite thin and then use contact cement to like layer them on top of each other with like, you know, an inch of surface contact. And I ain't got time for that. <laughs> that would be a good way of going about it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be lazy and make more work for myself. See, I am learning. So I'm just threading up this needle, just getting it ready. And I'm actually going to, since we're so kind of short on space here on the back side, I'm actually just gonna come through. I'm gonna come back four stitches. I think that should be plenty. And thread that through. Now this is one of the rare instances that I will use these chain nose pliers just because there's no way that my nylon oh there's no way my nylon gel would have gotten in it. Oh poor qua. Um tangible frustration. <laughs> it's okay though, these things happen. So that's how I would scribe it if I were to glue the two pieces together. Nice and thin and long like that. But it's not what I'm going for right now. Put that back in there. And it's the little spine on this one just isn't as grabby as I'd like it to be. It's an older needle, but it still checks out. And this is, I've been leather working for like seven years now. Um, and this is pretty standard. <laughs> so if, you find, if you're new to this and you find yourself messing up quite a bit, you are in numerous company. Many of the leather workers that I admire a great deal mess up all the time. So we've gotten that threaded through. I'm going to be careful to not pull it out all the way, but I am going to pull it until that tail's encased. And I'm going to tug on our old needle, make it nice and tight, and do, looks like I can fit one, maybe two more stitches with what we have remaining on the needle. Nope, just the one. Okay. So I'm going to remove that needle. Wow. Tuck it. Kind of back behind everything. And now bring this one, our new lace, which oh, I sure do hope that this is enough lace to finish off these next four stitches. Um, but yeah, just if you're ever in my booth shopping or looking at my Etsy or something, just know that there's not a single piece of uh, leather that has this uh, lace, you know, edging that was not, does not have this at the end. Though we are getting a little bit of weird here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deviate from the proper stitch a little bit just to pull it down to make the stitching look correct on the front. And then we're going to continue. Because, I don't know about y'all, but I feel sometimes that it looking right is more important than it actually being right sometimes. So that isn't exactly doing what I need it to do. So I'm going to have to do it again. Crap. <laughs> there we go. And just whip stitching around. And now onto our last stitch. Which, again, if your laces are laying over like that, just tuck on through. To pull it over a bit. further proof that I truly am just making it up as I go along. Here's a looser look of it. Pull that down nice and tight. And now let's start hiding our stitching on the back. Uh-oh. 
But yeah, see, it started to get all kinds of weird, like a little like spiral twist. <clears throat> I'm gonna trim this tail. And I'm going to take this and start going through the stitching here on the edge. And I can't do a whole bunch at once, so I'm just going to do like three at first. And grab it. Our end started getting a little wonky. Things are getting weird. Let's just pull it through anyway. There we go. Pulling back and down to try to keep everything positioned. That I'm going to remember y'all forever. That whenever every, every time I put this up in my booth, it's going to drive me nuts. I could have just gone back and fixed it, but I didn't. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Straightening that out a little bit. Resecuring our needle. And then re entering to snag another three, or in this case four, stitches to pull through. I think that'll take care of us. So I'm going to come in with my scissors, snip. And now you can see it looks nice and sleek from the back and our front is ready to apply our hooks which is the next step so we have finished lacing our material onto the front of our grid um, just to keep you all up to speed this is what the back's looking like <coughs> just walked myself in the face with it um and i did a little test to see you know how this would work um, this I only used a six millimeter on I decided to go with an eight millimeter and we'll get more to that here in just a sec but this is what we're gonna be making um, and you can do it independent of the grid squares but I've had people just almost try to rip the hook directly off and I do feel like given enough stubbornness people might be well you know prove me wrong it's actually pretty hard to pull out of just the foam but just to be extra stable certain um because we've had folks just try to rip stuff right off of the uh, display before um we're going to be looping our hooks around the grid square so don't do it if that's not what you're into but just in case you are this is how i'm going about it now i am using a 16 gauge copper core it's um enameled copper wire and I'm going to start with the way that I determine length for projects is I'm going to cut two pieces at the same length and this one you know come on wire cutters and now I know what length my first one was after I've made stuff out of it <clears throat> and then I'll continue on to cut out all like 28 or whatever, however many we have. Um, I'm going to begin by making a little loop just with my round nose pliers, just on the tip, like that. Let's see if maybe zooming in might not be a bad idea. And then I like to use my step to mandrel pliers because they help me be more consistent. And I'm wrapping around the eight millimeter section, Whoop. just like that. And I did, I choose to display my pendants without chains. Um, so that's why my design, my display is designed like this. Um, we'll work in the future on making a, um, a pendant display that is if you sell chains with your pendants. So coming to about the middle of our little loop here. Oh. Just doing a 90 degree bend towards the back. And then I like to use a size six seed bead. This is Bead Treasure brand. And I like them, they're a little inconsistent in size, as you can see here. But what I really like about them is they, for the most part, 
for, <laughs> sorry, I am a mature adult. Um, for the most part, uh, they fit onto my, my 16 gauge wire, which I kind of muddied the end of this one up when I was cutting it. So now it won't seem to fit through anything. So I'm just going to re-snip that. Yeah, there we go. And so it just slides right on there. And what this is going to accomplish is now, um, whenever we go to hang a pendant, there's just that little bit of space and we can hang our pendant on there without a whole lot of trouble. And this is why actually a lot of my bales end up looking like this on my pendants. This one's not finished yet, but we could squeeze them together just a, just a tad and fit it quite comfortably onto our hook, but it fits more comfortably I've found onto a hook that's just a little bit wider. And it costs just, I mean, a tiny bit of wire more, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, I'm gonna set all my tools off to the side. And what we're doing now is the little holes that we had poked earlier. I'm just pressing this right on through the whole thing. And it looks like we have significantly more than what we actually need protruding out of the back. Like we don't we don't need that much wire. So I'm gonna snip off about that much. It's a little over a centimeter. And then from here, let me get this. Oh, I'm just knocking stuff over. Uh, making sure that our hook is positioned the way I want it to on the front. I can kind of feel with my hand. I'm just going to grab this and then I'm cinching it around. So that's how it's looking. And that way it has stabilized by that bar on our little grid square coming across. And so I'm going to do this on every single um, little hole that we had punched earlier into our leather. Uh, so now you know, we've determined to take that much off. So I'm going to get in here. I'm going to snip that much off. And now I'm going to use this piece to measure out all of the other pieces, just working off the spool. until I have, I like to cut them all, and then I loop all the ends on all of them, and then I make the shepherd hook on all of them, and then I do the bend on all of them. It's very, very like assembly line, but it keeps me from having to take the time of picking up and setting down my pliers, which it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but I mean, you know, it, it, if it takes two seconds, you know, you multiply that by like, you know, a hundred, because <laughs> I'm making quite a few of these displays, and it just, it starts to add up. And it also it lets me kind of like zone out a little bit while I'm working. Maybe you know, watch some YouTube or something. But yeah, so we're gonna do all of that. And then just to demonstrate, I'll go through on the flat end, because my flush cutter or yeah, my side cutters leave a pinched side and a flat side. I like to use the flat side for making the loop, and then I actually use the pointed side, the pinched side, to push through the um the foam backing on our displays. So it's not necessary, but meh. <laughs> this is just how I'm doing it. I'm just bumping around into things. So yeah, I'll kind of get them positioned. And just keep making all those little loops because also by determining by making this loop not as small as it could possibly be it helps me to make sure that my pendants will be able to fit onto my chains because if it won't even fit over that then it won't fit onto um, the chain that we like to string up our necklaces on so I'm gonna go ahead and so yeah pretend like we just did whole bunches of like pretend like we just did all of these and then I'll position it wrench it around. It also helps me with consistency, I think. Position it, wrench it around. Position it, wrench it around. I am the machine. 
um, position it and wrench it around. And we just do that until we're done. And then we'll go through, position, bend, position, bend. And again, just it's the repetition and the consistency that will get us where we're going. And then I just stack all those guys on themselves until we're done. And then I'll add the beads and then we'll poke them through. And I'll meet you guys back here to observe the final product. Okay, please forgive the poor lighting, but I have my prototype booth uh, for the new improvements set up here in, in the craft room. And you can see we have all the grid squares set up and everything, but I really want to come down and show you guys our new versus old displays. Um, so this is the first prototype that I had made and it has a mixture of large and small pendant slots. But you can see with the use of some very fancy uh, safety pins. I have a safety pin hooked just to the grid and then with a key ring attached to the safety pin and then our little latchy part opens. And then that way, whenever we're behind the table, I'll show you how that works whenever we get the other one set up, because I'll be able to reach it from the back side of the table. But um, whenever we're helping a client get something off of the display, we don't have to walk around the table to get it, which I think will be very helpful, because that way we won't actually be blocking how, you know, blocking clients from seeing the stuff that's for sale at shows and stuff and stuff. So, uh, let me grab this down. But yeah, just a safety pin with a key ring. And then I come for my display setup. I have it in the very center, like four, yeah, four grid squares back. So I go back one, two, three, and on the fourth one, uh, I, I clip it. Let me make sure you can actually... Yeah, you can see it kind of wagging there. Boop. And we do that, that way it's far enough, the tray will be far enough forward that the light will still be hitting it. And we're installing a strip of, it's going to be held on with zip ties, so install is a very strong word, but uh, an LED strip lighting. That way it's catching the light, it's visible uh, from, you know, someone between five and six feet tall, uh, or shorter to, you know, but anyways. <laughs> So let's scooch off. This was one of our old displays. Now you can see I just had it to where they were safety pinned to the little clippy part. Um, but that we used a hair ties and little 18 gauge hooks and that's how the back looked. So now no hair ties, which I think will be great because the hair ties over the years lose their stretch and start to break and sag and stuff. But there's the front. The back looks a lot sharper, which helps me to feel tidier just behind the table. And I'm actually going to hook onto this one that we have set up already. Let me make sure that that's in frame. And so we'll just come in and I'm gonna have the clip attached in a way that'll be easy to unhook from behind the table. And so it sits just like that. And let's get this cranked up and turned down. That way, let's just start hanging pendants on there just to see how they look. They hook on pretty easily. That one's a little long for the bottom. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that one's just a really long pendant anyways. And we can hook through one or both of our little bail loops on the bales that I make that style and I decided to go ahead and just make the last four of the displays in a manner that um, only displays uh, large pendants um, because I figure it just I don't know it, it was very pleasing to Randy and I to have it be very um, equal spacing uh, and I felt like it showcased all of the pendants better than trying to just cram as much as we could onto each, you know, display. So quality over quantity, whereas in the past we'd focused on quantity 
because we were like, ah, just, you know, the more we put out, the more people might buy. Um, but really, we ended up, I think, just overwhelming um, our customers. And a lot of pendants, they'd be like, oh gosh, well, I didn't even see that. Which is a nice experience for when we're at smaller events and they're like, you know, uh, kind of the same people are coming through all weekend. They can see something that they may maybe looked over the first time. But I think even with it like this, that will still be possible. Like, I don't think we're shortchanging ourselves by having out fewer pendants per display. Because really, on our old display, we only had three flats. And now we have five. So even though we're displaying fewer, since they're more evenly spaced out, like I really like this. I may actually end up remaking uh, the other one just because I like this so much, actually. I'll have to get Randy's opinion on it, but then we might... I don't know what we're going to do with the other one. Is that backwards? Yeah, that's backwards. <laughs> now, if I, I were... Now, we are going to be making some displays with chains uh, for pendants that will be displayed here on the front section of the table. And also, our intention is to still travel with these pendants, like, living on the flats. Like, um, instead of taking them back off and putting them back in our storage, your inventory storage, um, we're going to just slide a little piece of foam in behind them to keep them from rubbing on the leather. Because you can see on these, that, that rubbing starts to really... Uh, show some wear and tear and also the reason I put foam underneath on the new ones is so that over the years these ridges don't show through because I felt like that was like unnecessary like uh, they don't have to be there <clears throat> but yeah I really like the you know equal spacing I really like that we can put a large or small pendant literally wherever we want and I've, I've never made, typically, like, maybe, like, in five instances in my entire career have I made pendants bigger than that. So, and they still display just very comfortably, even the large bales. And I can still put the wee bitty little silly bits out. If we want something just little. Okay. So there we are. Fully, fully, you know, stop. Um, but yeah, so now let's test and see how we would, you know, uh, you, you stand here, camera, and everybody watching, and pretend like you are a customer. Be like, oh, yes, that's super nice. I, I like that one. And I'd be like, oh, okay. So I'll be able to just reach from behind, come around, take it off, clip it back up and fulfill your order. That was actually really easy. I like that. <laughs> now, I think we're gonna have trouble with, let's zoom out a bit. So here you can see, there's this section of the table, which in our display, like you can see how um, that's gonna be kind of blocked. And this cube here, that one, I think, will be the hardest one to access the, um, the little clip whenever it's hanging down. Though, whenever we're at events where our friends with Aridani Studios are not there, um, we will be selling uh, their prosthetic elf ears. So that will, pro that will be the cube that the prosthetic elf ears go into. Um, but whenever we don't have those out, we'll just put another pendant flat there. So... Yeah, that's how we've been displaying uh, our pendants. Yeah, I like I like the new one much better than even the first prototype. I definitely, I mean, I do still like the prototype better than the old pendant flat, but like this one here just looks kind of cluttered when compared with that one. So that's my thoughts on the on the whole thing and I will keep you guys up to date as we go more and more with our new jewelry display setup and things like that as well as whenever we get the um Randy and I call them ski slopes ski slopes because it's a little bit of a uh, it's not flat but it's a ski slope 
um, display that we'll be having pendants with chains um, displayed on. So there's that. Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you and maybe got some juices flowing for your own ideas, for your own display, because you know your display better than anybody and kind of, you know, how your interactions are with your customers or what your goals are and like your aesthetic and stuff. And so please take what I did here and adapt it as you feel necessary or inspired. Um, and then tag me on Instagram so I can see how your setup comes out because y'all are the most creative bunch of people I've ever had the joy of working with and um, I love to see all the cool ideas that y'all come up with. Uh, hmm, there's links to my Instagram and Facebook and all that, all that stuff, <laughs> all the internet crap down below in the video description uh, as well to links on Amazon where you can get boop, the little thingies and the little thingies and the stuff, like all the, all the different tools and materials, hopefully, uh, that we use in this video. If it's not specifically linked, there is a, like, uh, like a umbrella link that you can click that, like, will take you to where I have, like, some different lists of things that I use pretty frequently in all my different videos. Ouch. And that should be helpful. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think... Oh, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them beyond subscribing and sharing and liking and being in my bell and all the different things that we do here on YouTube, um, you can uh, join us over on Patreon. Even if you just follow, it didn't take any money, but the more you pledge, the more you get. Um, over on Patreon, we do like behind the scenes content, lots of like uh, digital download content. Um, and then if you pledge in one of our craft along kit tiers, we send out monthly craft along kits. So this is a really long outro. So I'm gonna let you all get back to your day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again, and I'll see y'all in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>